So we're going to build one more thing. So this is pretty cool. We have a, um, a shade structure on our glass, but we're going to take it uh, one level deeper. We're going to go um, a multi, uh, multi-branch multi data structure. Because right now we're really just using, taking one list and then putting an item per, per uh, one branch per item, per panel. But let's try to do something else. So I'm going to try to sketch this out. If this is our panel, forgive the bad sketch, and this is our inner rectangle, and we have a shade on top. What I want to do is create a frit. Maybe it goes in the opposite direction, using that same sort of cross line where now it's going to be here that I want. If this is my frit, let's showcase it like this. What I want to do is to create straight lines across whatever this uh, pattern here is. It's a very bad sketch, please forgive me. But how would we go about doing this? Well, we already figured out how to get these points made. So I feel comfortable getting this outer edge. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab just this one edge here. And I'm going to then grab the points by subdividing that curve. And then what I'm going to do is taking that original polyline, I'm going to find the intersection of a plane at that location where it crosses. Once I identify that point, I can then draw a line between them. That might have been a bit fast. Um, let's, let's walk through it. So, I can reuse a lot of this lattice structure we already have. In fact, much of the code is going to be the same. Let's zoom in on one panel. Let's look at this one. If I turn on this line, this is how we are creating a single point. So I'm going to copy this part down. This is going to be our uh, a new line, only this length is going to be different. I'm going to start not with a um, something complicated, something between 0 and 1. So maybe I now want my point to be here. I'm not going to move it off the facade because I want it to be flat. And now I'm going to create a polyline from those four points. So here's my polyline. I need a list of vectors. So I'm going to start with the upper left, which is easy to find. Actually, I'm going to move this up here. So upper left, I'm going to use the same order, so then lower left lower right, and now that middle point that I just made. Let's confirm the trees make sense. That looks good. Now notice it doesn't close. All I have to do is right click on this close, set it to true. And now I have my frit boundary. So we've created our frit outline. The next step is to gather just that leftern edge. So we're going to do that by exploding the line. Now notice here, if I just hover over those branches, I see that I have on the left 0 through 142, and on the right all zeros. If I simplify this, I'm going to clean up that branch. OK, so now I have four items and 143 branches. So this makes sense. What I'd like to do is to use list item to grab the left most edge. In this case, it happens to already um, be the first item. So that's quite convenient. I now have the left edge. Now I want to subdivide that to create um, the starting points for all of my lines. So I can use divide curve. If I input this length, and how many do we want? I'm not sure. We'll see. Let's start with 10. So now I have a bunch of points. Now here, um, I want to simplify this again. It often will, will add new, um, 
new pieces for you. You may or may not want that. Now that I have um, all these points, the next step of the logic is to build a plane. And in our case, um, because what I, w what I end up wanting to do, I want to do this uh, in intersection command. If I go over to intersection, because I want to see well, where would this point align with another point over here. Closest point wouldn't give me a flat edge. So I already know that there's a really nice command under intersection called curve and plane. And what this does is it will take any curve, in this case the polyline that I have, I plug that in, and it says, okay, for all these um, polylines, intersect with certain planes. And what I want to do is, uh, for every single curve, I want to give a list of intersection planes. So if I use an XY plane, and I reset the origin to be every one of these points, think of these as slicers. And now, we're hard coding this XY plane. I could, um, maybe orient it to the actual surface, but I know that I'm always going to be using a vertical facade for this design, so I don't need to have it oriented to the face. But if you were to have a dome type shape, you would need to um, possibly orient this not to world XY, but to panel XY. In our case, we're going to skip that. So here I have 11 um, items each, meaning 11 cutting planes, per panel. So I hover over my data tree, n equals 11, n equals 1. So this now, it might look misaligned, but this is what I want to do. I want to only apply these 11 cutters to this one curve. So having 11 items here and that one polyline, when I plug this in, it's going to identify out here all of the intersection points. Now this here is really interesting because we now have our first um, double layer tree. So here we always had it was just one branch, meaning one branch per panel with all the items. But if I now look over here, let's look at Param Viewer. When I look at these points, I notice I either have one or two items. And if I look at the branching structure, I see that it's increasing. So before, every time we had two numbers, they were uh, one of them was redundant. We had a random zero that we would simplify out. But now the numbers mean something. So and this is showcasing how the data tree structure can be used to represent the, um, your logic structure. So on the left, that represents the panel. So notice that I have um, 0, and if I were to scroll all the way down, it goes up to 142. So that's the panel column. On the right is the cutting plane. So this 0 is from the very first um, item that I put in. So I had 11 items, starting with one of these planes moving all the way up. So when it went through this command, it automatically grafted, essentially, so that this is now the first, the first plane. And it's giving me one intersection. It's probably this one here, because it's just one point. When I move down, I have two points. If you look in here, this plane's going to intersect this outline. Let's take a look only at the curves. Actually. So this plane here is going to be intersecting, it's a little harder to see, there you go. That one plane intersects in two locations. And this is perfect, um, because I know that this form is only ever going to have two intersection points at most. So what I can now do, it's already, the tree is already set up to give me the endpoints of the line I want to create. So all I have to do now is a very basic line command, two points do list item. Now these points, one and two, you can see the highlight in green. When I plug these in, it's going to generate all of the lines. Because the logic of this bit of code here says just grab two points and make a line. But the data structure has already carefully collected all of the intersections of my polyline so that this command can work very simply. I just add them together. And when there's only one item, it's not going to create a line. So that all works. So here we have a nested logic within a nested logic of the panels. Because I'm repeating this basic logic of intersection, create a line. I'm repeating it many times for one polyline curve. 
and then I'm doing that many times again for every panel. So you can start doing this, uh, and that's really the power of Grasshopper, is that this sort of nested logic, you can loop things um, like a Russian doll over and over and over again. So you have a very simple logic, very simple code that gets replicated to do some very powerful things across curved surfaces, right? Um, very powerful, very flexible, but it requires data trees, and it requires a strong understanding of how to um, check those data trees, manipulate them, make sure they're aligning, just like list management. If you can't manage your data, you really can't use Grasshopper properly, which is why we are creating this tutorial, as we find in practice um, those intro tutorials uh, that give you a basic sense of the how to use the canvas, how to use Grasshopper, they help you get into it, but you're very limited until you are able to model parametrically with data tree structures. And without understanding it properly, you just keep running into bugs. Um, so with that, we now have some of the key geometry. Let's do a little bit of cleanup, just so our design looks good. I'm going to collect these curves. Let's bring them out here. I'm going to create a final surface that's going to be both of our, shade, our shades here. Let's turn them off. Turn everything else off. And we already have this preview geometry. Let's bring that out here. Copy this down. Maybe we can change the color a little bit. Maybe some kind of copper. Now for displaying curves, I'm going to use this uh, preview curve that's part of the human plugin. If you don't have this plugin, don't worry, this is just to make things look a little nicer. Um, it's a, it's a very useful plugin. I strongly encourage you to download it. And this allows you to display line weights with a thickness. So now that frit's going to be a little bit more noticeable. And the last thing I want to do is to grab <clears throat> the window surface that we had. And there we have it. We have successfully used data trees to build a complex facade. Um, this is uh, very detailed stuff in Grasshopper, but now we have what we need to uh, develop nested parametric logic, to debug complicated scripts, and to build just about anything we want now in Grasshopper. So I hope you enjoyed this.